Hello and welcome to video number four in my Q&A series for AS and A2 level biology. This has been a really highly requested topic from Unit 1 Biology and Disease and this is humoral immunity. Remember if you've got any questions about AS or A2 biology that you'd like answering or if you've got any topics that you'd like explaining in more or less detail you can email me at biologybyjp at gmail.com and I will try to produce something to help you out. Thank you so much for all the video requests you've, I've had so far. I'm working my, my way through them as quickly as I can. So thank you. But let's, for now, get stuck into some immunity. So here's the topics we're going to look at. We're going to look at B cells and humoral immunity. So that's B cells, that's plasma cells and T helper cells. That's memory cells and also we'll talk a little bit about antigenic variability. So this humoral immunity we're talking about is to do with the production of antibodies um, by the cells we're going to talk about here. Um, and the reason why it's called humoral immunity is because the antibodies themselves can be so they're soluble in the fluids of the body, or the humors, as they used to be called. So let's get stuck in and start talking about some B cells. So what do B cells do? Well, B cells, they take up antigens from the surface of pathogens and then they present them on their own surface after a little bit of processing. So here's a pathogen and here are some antigens on the surface. Here's our B cell and let's have a look what happens. So the antigens get taken up inside the B cell for processing and then they're presented on the surface of the B cells. And for that reason, we call B cells antigen presenting cells. The question is, what happens next? So, B cells can stimulate the production of helper T cells, or rather, it can start to activate them. Now, those helper T cells can go on to do many different things. They can kill infected cells, that's as killer T cells. They can stimulate B cell division, which we'll look at in a second. They can stimulate the formation of memory cells, which we'll look at in a second. And they can also stimulate phagocytosis, which is quite useful. So these helper T cells are really, really handy little things to be having, having around in your body. Now, plasma cell production is really key. These are the guys that are going to produce the antibodies that are going to go on to kill infected cells. So... Remember, this is stimulated again by helper T cells, as we saw on the previous slide, but B cells, they're going to undergo mitotic division, or cloning by mitosis, to produce these plasma cells, which produce antibodies that are complementary to the presented antigen on the B cell. So here we go. There we go. And there's the antibodies hanging around inside the, uh, the plasma cell, and there they are to go on and be released to go and do all sorts of harm to any infected cells. And this is known as the primary response. So let's have a little look at the next stage, which is the formation of memory cells. So memory cells are really handy things. These last a very, very long time, sometimes up to in, an, up to an over a decade. Um, and memory cells hang around in your bloodstream just waiting. They wait and they wait and they wait. And if you get a subsequent, subsequent infection by something that your body has been infected before and your body has the memory cells for the antigens on that pathogen then they can rapidly produce antibody producing plasma cells um, to help combat infection. So there's one of my beautifully illustrated memory cells with the antibodies on the surface ready ready and waiting um, and this is known as the secondary response and what we see is that uh, the first time we get infected by a pathogen, our body responds pretty slowly. However, the second time we get infected by a pathogen, the response is much quicker, and that's because we have these memory cells that can rapidly produce the plasma cells that are going to produce the antibodies or release the antibodies to kill the pathogen. So what was the last thing I was going to talk about? Oh yeah, that's right, antigenic variability. Now, Antigenic variability is the idea that uh, some pathogens um, have very little difference between the antigens on the surface, and things like chickenpox show this sort of low antigenic variability, which means that once you've had chickenpox once, um, your body can recognize it through the use of memory cells, because the, path the pathogen has antigens uh, that don't change very much from, from one strain to another. Um, others, however, like the flu, show greater 
antigenic variability, so swine flu, bird flu, all that, all that kind of jazz. Um, they have huge, huge differences in the antigens on their surface. So when you hear about H five N one H one N one, those H's and N's they res they refer to different antigens on the cell surface or different proteins on the cell surface of the influenza virus, and those different numbers refer to different types of antigens. And there's a problem with that because it means that if we have pathogens with greater antigenic variability, we're more likely to get infected again and again and again because we don't have any appropriate memory cells in our body and therefore we can't quickly produce those plasma cells uh, to produce the antibodies. So this is very tricky. Um, so I hope that's explained the humoral response to you guys. Um, remember that if you've got any further questions, you can, of course, email me to ask about uh, any other topics. And that's biologybyjp at gmail.com. I hope this has helped. The immunity topic is very tricky, and I will do maybe one or two more videos uh, in the next day or so. I know the exam's on Wednesday, but good luck, and thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe.